Of all the creatures to have inhabited the earth, it is little surprise that the ants ruled supreme. The history of ant kind documents ant settlements on every continent, extending to the remotest locations with fiercely protected borders and a perpetual struggle for resources. Distinct ant colonies had formed, with cultural differences, language barriers, and opposing beliefs. However, the ants had learned to coexist, engaging in trade and establishing government systems to enforce law and order within the colony. Being the most intelligent species on Earth, they controlled the Earth's resources and were at the top of the food chain, relegating all other species to natural habitats and wildlife reserves. Scientific research in the field of humanology, the study of humans, led the ants to believe this species to be highly intelligent and capable of creating complex social environments. As long ago as ants can remember, the use of violence to achieve results has been an unfortunate but recurring theme. Ant wars were waged throughout history between ant colonies, led by ant queens and their armies of soldier ants. However, in the 18th century, a form of violence evolved, spreading fear amongst the ants' population to achieve political ends. Maximilien Robespierre Ant introduced the word terror to the ant vocabulary, the violence he wrought in France becoming the origin of the modern-day terror ant. Various forms of terror ants came into being, like the Red Ant Army of Communist Colonies, Assassin Ants, and more recently the Tiger Ants, Keda Ants, and Cyber Ants, who carry out viral attacks to ant systems around the world. As unfortunate as it may be, present-day ant colonies of the 21st century have grown accustomed to the presence of terrorism in their world. Although condemning past terror ant attacks, they have learned to live under the looming presence of terrorism. However, the bustling economic activity of a prosperous western ant colony, a port and a financial center, is uninterrupted by fear of such terrorist attacks. Life continues as usual in the ant apple, where every ant has an opportunity to get a bite. Gas-guzzling vehicles clutter the streets, and modern culture evolves in every form. Here, in the ant apple, stands the tall twin ant house, active centers of financial business and monuments of national pride. In this thriving ant society lives a young ant named Zippy. Zippy lives in a typical capitalist society, amongst the worker ants who busily produce and the grasshoppers who lazily consume. He goes to school, plays sports, and leads a worry-free life like any other ant his age. Surrounded by the prosperity brought about by the Wall Street ants, the ant apple is a safe haven, removed from the deadly reality of terrorism. Of course, life has changed in response to the deadly terrorists. Security has increased and travel has become a nightmare. But little is known of the life of the terror ants, who reside all the way across the world. Zappy terror ant is a young ant, leading a very different life from Zippy. He lives in constant hiding, sleeping at night in a desert compound with none of the amenities of a luxurious apartment building. He must move with his Keda ant family and is told not to speak to anyone. As you can see, Zappy has problems of his own. And, in Zappy's eyes, the colony ants are responsible for all his problems. He despises colony ants as much as colony ants hate and fear terror ants. In fact, has a growing pride in being a Keda ant, a pride that grows greater still when he learns about the Keda ant's next initiative. Back in Zippy's colony, a group of Keda ants have infiltrated the colony and are secretly preparing for attack. With arms ready and eyes set on their target, they wait in silence while the colony ants continue life in the ant apple. However, when the fateful morning in September finally does arrive, the Keda ants strike with more force than ever. By the end of the day, pivotal ant hills all over the continent lie in rubble, including the twin ant hills. The ant apple is in an uproar. Ant casualties are immense, and Zappi's terror ant community openly takes responsibility for the attack. When Zippy hears the news of the twin hills' destruction, his response is not fearful. Instead, it is fierce. He refuses to allow these terrible ants, who are violent and cruel, to falsely feel any sense of victory or superiority over the colony ants. With an encompassing sense of hatred and a potent thirst for vengeance, the colony ants are quickly united in their cause, and the ant apple launches a counterattack against the Keda ants. 
The attack is swift and fatal, and the lead terror ant is taken down. Zappy Ant, who until now felt some concern for the actions that took place on that fateful day in September, now detaches himself from any ounce of such remorse, consumed by a righteous anger and a desire for revenge of his own. Now, both ants face each other on a global stage, in spiteful hatred, refusing to concede that their own actions might have played a part in the worldwide war, a war spreading from financial towers of strength to remote desert wells. Zippy and Zappy don't realize that they live in a time of a unique war, a war that will never have a victory. Sure enough, as decades pass, the colony ants and the terror ants launch cold-hearted, brutal attacks against each other in an endless battle of attrition. Eventually, neither side can remember what started the resentment, who attacked and who retaliated. New generations, the grandchildren of Zippy and Zappy, struggle to retrace the steps along the convoluted, twisted historical path of attacks and counterattacks. On the other hand, Zippy and Zappy, now older and wiser, view each other very differently. What is left of the animosity that once burned deep inside them has turned to a sweet reminiscence. They now wish that the world could rewrite its own history, return to simpler times, the good old days, when an ant's biggest problem was his lack of a Facebook page or the restriction of a juice box on a plane.